Station, this is Houston. Are you ready for the event? Houston Station is ready for the event. NBC Nightly News, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call Station for a voice check. Stand by, I've always wanted to say this. International Space Station, this is Brian Williams at NBC News in New York. How do you read? Uh, hello, Brian. We hear you loud and clear. Nice to have you, and I guess we'll uh, uh, get underway. Uh, first off, what's it like working with Sandra Bullock? Uh, we have yet to see Sandra Bullock up here, but uh, we continue to look for her. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, that's what I hear from so many astronauts who uh, enjoyed the movie. Well, we'll get serious first. Uh, it, it is true that gravity was probably the best uh, uh, geographic lesson in the confines of the ISS that a lot of Americans have had uh, since the inception of the ISS. But recently you were in the news. A few people here on Earth had some fun with you with the snorkel and the helmet and the absorbent pads to keep from drowning, but you had... You had a couple of spacewalks to fix a problem. NASA loves redundancies. There was a redundancy for the pump that broke, but still it required you to go out and do some repair work, the two of you. Talk us through that in lay terms, what it required and how things are running now. Yeah, I'll give you a big picture. Basically, uh, we have two cooling systems up here that, that cool basically half the equipment. These cooling systems are uh, external. They cool the internal systems. And one of the uh, pump modules had a problem. Basically, a valve wasn't working properly, so we lost half our cooling. Very simply, we had to go outside and replace the pump module unit. It's a big 800-pound unit, and that required a series of EVAs or, or spacewalks. So the ground team got together. This is something we practice on a regular basis in the uh, large swimming pool in Houston. The, the ground folks got together, sent us up some procedures. And uh, the first spacewalk uh, a couple of weeks ago, we removed the old pump module. And then in the second spacewalk, we installed the new pump module. Space station's back up. Everything is uh, running perfectly. We're back to doing science on a regular basis. And back to uh, life on board the spacecraft. You orbit roughly every 90 minutes. You travel the distance from the Earth to the moon on a daily basis. How cognizant are you at any one time about where you are uh, over the, the, the Earth? Yeah, it's very interesting because when you get busy inside here, there's not a lot of windows to look out, and so you can kind of forget uh, where you are, and you, we have what we call a world map on board that uh, is always tracking where the station is. So uh, a lot of times you'll get busy and you, you want to know where you are, so you have to take a look at that world map, and uh, if it's somewhere you're interested in taking a picture, then you can run to one of the windows and, and try and get a picture of it. But other than that, it's a working environment. There's no sense of speed or motion at 17,500 miles an hour, and uh, it's just another day slash night on board the ISS, correct? Yeah, that's correct. Uh, you really don't get the sense of that speed until you do look out the windows and you see just how fast the, the Earth is going by below you. It, it's quite incredible uh, when we have a pass that goes over the United States, and it's probably less than 10 minutes that we'll, it takes to, to go over the United States. So it happens quick, but, but uh, on a normal day, we kind of control night and day just by turning on and off the lights in here. Homesickness can't be an option for people in your line of work, but what, what is it like being up there for the holidays, the, uh, uh, some terrific college football games, the NFL playoffs, uh, whatever it is that you follow here on Earth? Yeah, anytime you're away from home during the holidays, it's hard. Uh, you know, there's a thousand, hundreds of thousands of military folks and a lot of folks who spend time away from the families uh, during the holidays, and they all know how it feels, and we feel the same way. But if you have to be, you know, the way we think about it is if you have to be away from home during the holidays, there's not too many places better than being here on, uh, on board the International Space Station in low Earth orbit. 
But we have pretty good connectivity with our families at home. We have uh, what we call the IP phone, a telephone that we can call home almost any time of the day. We have uh, video conferencing with our families about once a week. And, of course, we have email. So we're pretty well connected to our families. And as far as uh, football games go, we, Mike and I both enjoy football. And uh, the ground is more than happy to send us up a football game every now and then. Now, judging from where you're both from, I'm, I'm taking a guess here that we are Chiefs Patriots, but that could be wildly off the mark. What are your teams? Well, unfortunately, the, the Chiefs uh, have already gone home for the season. But, uh, uh, yeah, I would say uh, the Chiefs the Ram, or the, uh, the Rams, I guess, uh, would be. But uh, right now we're down in Houston, so I've, I've kind of become a Texan fan. Well, you're going to do very well in the next draft, I'll put it that way. And, Rick, what about you? Yeah, Brian, I grew up in Connecticut, kind of halfway between New York and Boston, and uh, I grew up as a Giants fan, a New York Giants fan, and I'm still a big fan of the Giants, and, of course, uh, I'm a fan of the Texans also. Uh, I knew I liked you for some reason. Uh, we all bleed Giants blue, all the good people down here. Um, uh, moving on to the Olympic Games, how much, how much of the Olympics will you be able to see, either live or tape delay? I don't know uh, the, the extent of your television viewing. And, of course, you'll get a better view of Sochi, Russia, than most of us looking right down during your orbits on the venues themselves. Yeah, actually, we passed right over Sochi area yesterday, and I actually got some great photographs of the area and tweeted some of those. As far as the Olympic goes, I'm sure that the, uh, the NASA folks are more than willing to uh, give us some actually some live feeds and also some tape delay stuff that they could uplink some video for us. So I'm sure uh, once we give them a, uh, a list of the different uh, events that we want to see, they'll be happy to uh, send them up to us. Of course, it's tough to top. Um, uh, you guys had uh, Commander Chris Hadfield of Canada up there, who famously uh, became kind of uh, the YouTube voice of the International Space Station. He, he made some fabulous instructional how-to videos, how to uh, brush your teeth and how a sandwich is made and how the, how the bathroom works up there. And uh, famously, Commander Hadfield uh, produced and recorded Space Oddity, ground control to Major Tom, from space, the first time that's ever been done. I don't know uh, what you plan to top that, whether there's a spring production of Hello, Dolly! in the works. Well, it, it would be hard to uh, to top uh, Commander Hatfield, Chris Hatfield, and and really, uh, to be all honest, uh, you don't you don't want to hear Rick or I sing. Uh, it, it wouldn't be very good. Uh, there's a lesson in that, though. He really did personalize space travel. And if you look at some of the sessions he did, Q&A with uh, especially Canadian students, um, it was really terrific. What would be your wish uh, if, if the American people uh, knew one thing and would really concentrate on the fact that this many adults are hurtling around the Earth every 90 minutes conducting experiments on this massive uh, football field size spacecraft that's slowly been growing and growing and growing over the years. What is it that you'd like people to know and understand about the International Space Station? Yeah, I think uh, actually uh, partly of what you just said is the fact that uh, we, we do have the International Space Station up here, and it's been going now for over 10 years. And for over 10 years, we've had an American presence, a human presence in space, 365 days out of the year, and that's and that's pretty incredible. And we're doing a lot of exciting things up here, particularly in the fields of science. And 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 what that is going to lead to is eventual exploration beyond low Earth orbit. And and so I think that's very exciting. And I'd like to see uh, people all across the country get excited about that as well. Rick, same question. Yeah, I, I guess I'd like to add to that. Uh, I worked the shuttle program for many years and got the opportunity to fly on the shuttle many times. And I've heard from many different folks, oh, is NASA going out of business? And uh, I think 
the most important thing to know is NASA never went out of business. The shuttle program ended, but the space station program is going strong. And like Mike said, we're up here doing research 365 days a year and have been doing so for many, many, many years and will continue to do so. And we're also building and designing new vehicles, and NASA has a bright future ahead of it. I guess uh, the American astronauts during this era do have to get used to uh, uh, splashdown on land because the Soviets are our ride. How much of a transition has that been, Rick? Yeah, it's been quite a bit of a transition. You know, the, uh, going from shuttle training to Soyuz training was uh, was quite interesting for me, and, and it was a it was a heck of a challenge actually. But it was very enjoyable to actually learn how to fly and operate another spacecraft was a rare opportunity for an astronaut. So I really enjoyed it. The biggest challenge, of course, is the language. Uh, just learning how to uh, speak and uh, use the Russian language in a way so that you can operate the vehicle and talk with mission control. Of course, I just called them Soviets, proving that I'm about 20 years uh, out of date. What did, uh, as in your civilian life, as you relate to family and friends, what has the movie Gravity done uh, to the astronaut business and to the understanding of the International Space Station? And other than the fact that Sandra Bullock's hair is not fly flying around in the movie and experts have found little uh, nits to pick about the movie, has it been, you think, overall a good thing? I think any time uh, you bring attention to the uh, the space program, I know I personally am very uh, get very excited about it because uh, again, it's we really enjoy what we do up here. We're very proud of what NASA has accomplished, and we think it's great when the American public pays attention and understands exactly what we're doing up here. As far as the movie goes, I, we uh, I saw the movie before launch uh, back in Moscow a couple of months ago, and it was very entertaining, and uh, we enjoyed it quite a bit. I've always told folks here in this country there are any number of websites you can go in, type in your zip code wherever you happen to be, and it'll tell you when the next overflight is uh, of the ISS, and on a clear night if you're away from light pollution. It's, it's just a breathtaking sight to behold. I saw you guys, we were in the Midwest, and I saw you guys fly over uh, about a week ago. Um, what is it that you have noticed about Earth? What perspective have you gained on the planet Earth? You see it all. You see weather, volcanoes, tragedies, uh, beauty, all in the course of a day's work. What is the one thing Yeah, you know, it's quite interesting. Uh, what surprised me about uh, getting our view of Earth is there's not a part of the Earth that isn't absolutely beautiful. I was quite surprised as we went over uh, regions that are like deserts, and I wouldn't think that that would, would have a, a lot of beauty to it. But then you see how these sand dunes are formed by the winds and these, these just amazing patterns in the sand dunes. And, and, and what I found then is that as we go around the Earth, every part of it, there, it is just absolutely beautiful. Now, one of the things you did mention is uh, perspective, and, and it is easy to lose perspective up here because when you see things like a hurricane, from our view, absolutely beautiful, these huge cloud formations, and, and it's very easy to lose sight of the fact that there's tragedy happening down below that, and so we always need to keep that in mind. Uh, Mike, I've always wondered uh, how much detail can you see? Is there, a, is there an Earth landmark that you can make out that surprised you? How big does something have to be to be visible, whether it's a, a building or Red Square or the mall in Washington? Uh, give us some perspective. I guess you're roughly just north of 200 miles off. Yeah, we're about uh, 260 miles up, and, and from with the naked eye, you know, you can see the cities uh, just in general, but what's really neat is when you start to use the, the cameras and you, and you take the photos of them and you can zoom in and you can really start to see quite a bit of detail. You can see airplanes at the airport. You can see boats on rivers. Uh, and so that's kind of exciting to be flying over that. You see the city that you want to take a picture of, and then you, you take that picture and you can zoom in with, uh, with quite a bit of detail on, on some of those features. And isn't it true, Rick, you've watched rocket launches come up and go past you out into space? 
other astronauts have, we have yet to uh, see. I think Mike might have seen something. Yeah, actually, when I first arrived, this was before uh, Rick and, and Koichi arrived up here, we had the opportunity to see a, uh, a test missile launch out of Russia, out of, uh, out of Baikonur in Kazakhstan. And it was absolutely incredible. When the, you, you saw the smoke trail as it uh, launched into orbit, and then once it got into orbit, there was just an absolutely huge cloud that, that formed in space and, and, uh, and got very large. And so absolutely incredible uh, view, and, and we actually were lucky and got some, some great pictures of it. Uh, well, Mike, starting with you, um, as we are uh, wrapping up here, what is your wish for 2014 and your message to the folks here on planet Earth? Well, I know uh, right now, obviously, uh, things have uh, been pretty rough down in, in the U.S. and actually all over with the, with the weather and everything. So first and foremost would be that everybody stays safe uh, uh, throughout 2014, and uh, of course, would would like to say hello to to my family and friends and everybody out there, and and look forward to for for both of us uh, safe landings this year as well. Same question, Rick. Yeah, and for same me, question, yeah, okay, for me, uh, obviously the same thing. Top of my head, uh, my uh, New Year's resolution is to have a safe landing on the planet Earth uh, sometime this year, of course. But and to all the f folks on Earth. You know, there's so many things uh, that you, you wish for the whole planet, but uh, when you are kind of flying above all these different countries and all these different regions and you kind of see them all as just one big planet, it sure makes you uh, wish that, uh, obviously, folks can uh, put aside their differences and, uh, and I hate to quote it, but, uh, you know, just get along with each other. And I think it's uh, great. Uh, something that makes me very happy is to see the Olympics. And I think it's going to be exciting to uh, get all the countries come together and uh, even that for those short period of time, work together. Well, a lot of us uh, envy the vantage point you'll have on all of it. Thank you, gentlemen, for the work you do. Uh, thank you very much for uh, representing NASA up there. And thank you most of all for spending time with us today. Uh, we'll have a good time with this on television, and we'll continue to spread the story of the ISS to our viewers. A happy and healthy 2014 to you both. Uh, thank you, Brian. We enjoyed talking to you, and uh, we watch your show every day at lunchtime, and uh, we appreciate the information. Hey, thanks for trying to find that house in Australia. I appreciate it. I won't ask for my own house, but... Uh... Thanks, gentlemen. Yeah, that was exciting. We, yeah, you bet, Brian. Thank you very much. And thank you, Houston, and everybody down the line. Station, this is Houston ACR. Thank you. That concludes our event. UNBC Nightly News. Station, we are now resuming operational audio communications.